everyone, my name is Katie Robertson and I wanna welcome you to our first Anchor at Home for the new year, 2021. Happy New Year, everyone. And we are thrilled you're with us. If you're here in a um, viewing us in a watch party with some close friends and family or you're on your own, we are so excited that you're tuning in tonight. And I wanna say we're really excited that we're dreaming big to take the anchor everywhere. And during this pandemic season, we're thankful for this virtual opportunity that we can have the video. And I wanna do a little shout out to some of you in other places around the country. And I'm gonna start over with the, um, in Maryland, shout out to you and to North Carolina and to New York and to Oklahoma and Illinois. And we know we have viewers in Oregon and Arizona and California and a very special shout out to the gals in Los Altos. They are excited about having a watch party tonight and we're so glad you're with us. And we just, for those of you who are first time viewers to The Anchor, I like to share just a brief history about how it all started. And it started here in my town, Gig Harbor, Washington, eight years ago, shortly after the biggest storm hit my life. And that's when um, our daughter, Karina, was diagnosed with leukemia and battled that for five years. And she passed away 10 years ago. And it was through that storm that I saw and um, experienced the realness of who Jesus Christ is. And it held strong for my daughter and my family. And I just have this passion and desire to share how real Jesus is. So I am so thrilled that you're here with us tonight. We've um, founded this ministry on our favorite verse in Hebrews 619. We have this hope, Jesus as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. So I just, our hope and prayer for you is that you'd be encouraged and that you'd be anchored in your faith wherever you are in that journey. If you're just new to this and learning or you've been walking in faith a long time, that you would be anchored and that you'd be anchored in friendships too. So at this time in the anchor, we have uh, time for music. And tonight is um, just a very extra special evening that we have a guest musician all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. And this connection, how we got this gal, her name is JJ Heller, is to me really um, just a faithful story of how God works and connects people. And this gal, JJ, she is from Nashville and she, we first heard of her, my daughter Karina and our family, a favorite musician, and it was during our daughter's battle with cancer. Um, we would do lots of trips to the hospital for treatments and um, therapies, and during that time, we were in the car, I'll never forget it. We were listening to the radio, and this song called Your Hands by the musician J.J. Heller came on the radio, and we listened, and as it stopped, Karina looked at me and said, Mom, those are the most perfect words. That's exactly for me. And that song we have held on to, so special. We used it in our daughter's uh, memorial video. And just so you all can understand, this is an amazing connection. I just happened to meet this lady who was friends with J.J. Heller. So through that connection, we are so thankful that she's going to perform the song your hands tonight and just a little more JJ does live in Nashville with her husband and family and her passion is writing music to encourage women that they are loved never alone and that they can live life with a full whole heart and we are just thrilled that she's with us tonight and one more other fun impressive fact she has 27 million views on YouTube so she is an amazing musician and we're thankful to get to hear from her. Hey everybody, I'm JJ and this is my husband Dave and it's great to be a part of the Anchor today. So we wrote a song together many years ago about God's faithfulness and I've been thinking about 2020 and what a crazy year. <laughs> It's been, and I think one of the hardest parts about it for me is just not knowing what's coming next. Like I wish God would just write it out and, and just give it to me so I could read it. But even in those times when I don't know what's coming and I don't know what God is doing, I can still trust in his character and I can still know who he is, that he's faithful and kind and generous. 
So even though this is an old song, I feel like it's pretty appropriate for right now. This is called Your Hands. JJ, that was awesome. We are so encouraged by that, those words of that song. Um, at this time, we have what's called the anchor moment, one of our favorite times of the anchor. That's a time where we get to hear from someone um, about their story, a little bit about themselves, their faith journey, and a time when their faith's been anchored or grounded, or they've seen Jesus really be real in their life. And tonight, we are very honored to have a gal who just recently moved to my town, our town, Gig Harbor. She's um, from Kirkland, but she just moved here with her family. She has two children. She lives with her husband here in the harbor, and she just began a new business as an interior designer, and she loves to make beautiful, peaceful spaces and help people uh, create those. So we are very privileged to have her sharing with us this evening. Her name is Anya Phillips. Thanks, Anya. Hi friends, my name is Anya Phillips and I am really excited to be sharing an anchor moment with you today. Um, when Katie asked me to share the first anchor moment of uh, the new year of 2021, I started praying and asking the Lord what he felt like would be uh, 
the most important because I feel like 2020 was filled with so many anchor moments where, um, gosh, the Lord showed up in my life and my family's life and so many of my friends' lives in really unique ways um, because I think is true for most of us, 2020 was a hard year. There was, um, there was so much uncertainty. That is the word that I've heard just reverberated through so many conversations that I've had and um, asking the Lord where he's at in the midst of our uncertainty is something that I think he invites us into and um, invites us into with open arms. And so as I think back on 2020 um, and for our own family uh, was filled with um, job changes and moving and um, our kids uh, switching schools in the midst of a pandemic and being online and um, and it a lot. I am a survivor of some pretty severe childhood trauma and unexpectedly uh, March hit me with profound grief that I thought I had already navigated through and dealt with. And um, I was really upset and angry, honestly. Um, and I know for so many whether it was um, old trauma or just the trauma of what 2020 has brought, um, there were so many opportunities for uh, us and me especially to either uh, press in and ask the Lord what he had for me in that moment or to be really angry. And um, I did both. (laughs) I certainly uh, had my fair share of moments where I was really frustrated and confused and uncertain. And I also really ask the Lord to renew and rebirth something in me of um, learning new habits and trying to understand um, what life looks like in a different way right now, because life does look very different. And so my encouragement, my anchor moment is um, just to remind all of us that God is with us no matter what circumstances we find ourselves in, um, no matter how hard it might be, no matter how um, how much it feels like there's not another side. There is always, always, always another side. And as we step into a new year, as um, I know not a lot will necessarily change just because we're in a new calendar year, um, but with new years come the opportunity for um, thinking about new patterns and new ways of um, thinking and acting. And so much of our life is our thought life. And um, the Bible tells us that uh, we should take our thoughts captive before God. And sometimes it's really hard to do. And yet I know it is also, it, it's not just a commandment for us to obey, but I think it's an encouragement because God always wants to encourage us. And so as we step into this new year, I want to leave you with um, a scripture that has really resonated on my heart and that I have been chewing on um, that the Lord brought into my life a couple weeks ago. It's from Mark 2. Um, and it says, these are new things I'm teaching and they cannot be reconciled with old habits. Um, that's Mark 2 verse 21. And it just feels so fitting as we step into a new year and we think about creating new habits. And um, if that means a new habit of being intentional about the time that we're spending with the Lord, I know for me, that's what that new habit looks like, um, about being really intentional about the time that I set aside to spend with the Lord, because so much of life (laughs) has uh, become unstructured these days. And so for me, it means being really intentional and habitual about when I say, okay, Lord, this is our time and this is our space. And so I pray that you would be encouraged in that. Um, And I pray just a tremendous blessing over 2021 for you, that you would experience and see and feel and taste the Lord in incredible and new ways. Thank you, Anya, for your inspiring message. And now at this time in the anchor, we have the message. And we are very honored tonight to get to hear from a special guest, Susie Hutchison. And a few things about Susie. Uh, First and foremost, the really cool fact is that she is a for real anchor woman. She has a career in journalism and being an anchor woman for Cairo News Channel 7 CBS um, in Seattle for over 25 years. So we're excited that she knows how to tell the story and bring the news. 
And she also is on the National Young Life Board and has served on other boards, the Seattle Children's Hospital Board, Seattle Art Museum, and the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. So, and there's more than that. She's very active and amazing in the things that she does. And we are um, so thrilled to have her. She actually lives in Seattle now with her husband. She has two grown sons, and we are so thankful that we can hear from Susie tonight. Thank you, Katie, and hi, everybody. I'm uh, so glad to be with you. I wish we could be together in person like we have in times past. I think we all miss um, the human contact that we enjoyed, the fellowship together, but um, this is the next best thing. I think um, the anchor, Katie, and her whole team have done a spectacular job. I will say that having done you know, 25 years in TV news in an empty studio with just a camera staring you in the face. This is kind of similar to doing TV news. So we'll, uh, we'll hang in there over, um, over uh, the new way of communicating these days. Um, well, 2020 is over, as Katie said. A welcome to 2021. And I've never seen and heard so many people say they could not wait for a year to be over at the end of 2020. But you know, a funny thing happened, we hit 2021 and everything's still the same. Uh, just because the calendar flips over, um, all the things that concern us deeply, and they do, uh, starting with COVID and then um, just dealing with lots of tough things in our world, in our community, uh, the politics, the racial strife, the rioting. You know, in downtown Seattle, uh, buildings are still boarded up. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of uh, concern within families. And, and we don't see in the future a quick resolution to any of it. And uh, so I think what happens at a time like this is we set our New Year's resolutions. And I know I've tried at that over the years. Um, usually the first one is losing weight. Uh, the second one is getting fit. And I feel sorry for all the gym owners who can't open up because uh, they make their purse in January when all those New Year's resolution people show up uh, and uh, sign up for gym memberships in order to try to get in shape. Uh, one of my chronic um, resolutions, it seems, is I'm going to read a certain number of books this year. And so it starts out, I'm going to read a book a week, and then that kind of falls to the wayside. I'm going to read a book a month. And uh, it's funny how hard it is for me to, um, to really complete books. I start a lot of books, but I don't complete them. But I have a thought about, for you and for me uh, today, about what is um, a New Year's resolution that is really important. It may be the most important New Year's resolution that any of us could commit to. And I'll share that as we go on. But um, first of all, I'd like to tell you a little bit of my story. Uh, Katie likes to say I'm an anchor woman, but before that happened, I was in high school in Northern Virginia, a suburb of Washington, DC. And I went to Annandale High School, great school. And uh, I, was, I grew up in the Lutheran Church. I was confirmed. And those of you who are Lutheran know that confirmation includes really memorizing a lot, including Luther's small catechism. So you're very well schooled in the things of religion. But I got involved with Young Life in high school. And I fit in very well, because I really did understand the Christian faith to an extent. And, uh, and one day, I had just been chosen Miss Annandale High School, and a friend of mine came up to me and she said, Susie, you have everything. You must be so happy. And her words at that moment just hit me like a bolt of lightning because I realized I did have everything that a high school girl could want. I had a loving family. I did well in school. I had lots of friends. I was popular. I had a hunk of a... A football player is a boyfriend named Andy Hutchison. And, um, but something was profoundly wrong because when she said that to me, I realized I wasn't happy. And so that kicked off several months of really sort of exploring. It was a crisis for me because I had to, I had to come to terms with what is happiness about and what am I here for? So uh, one of the things I was struggling with was my own sin. And, you know, we don't realize, but high school kids are very capable of understanding where they fall short. And I think sometimes better at it than as we grow older as adults and find out ways that we can just shove 
those um, parts of us that we don't want to think about into the background. But I was um, in my room one night and I was contemplating, thinking about why Jesus had to die on the cross. And that Bible verse that all of us probably know, uh, John 3, 16, came through my head. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And I suddenly inserted my own name in that verse. For God so loved Susie that he gave his only begotten son, that if Susie believes in him, she will not perish, but have eternal life. And that's when I had a totally new view of who God was, who Jesus was, the Savior of Susie, as well as the world. And so um, there was no turning back after that. That reality has been um, undeniable for me uh, all these many, many years since. And so I started out uh, as a believer in Jesus Christ with a real relationship that not just included my head, but also my heart in, uh, in my junior year of high school. Well, I went on and I married that hunk of a football player, Andy Hutchison. And um, after graduating from college, I got a degree in journalism. And he went into the military, uh, obviously out of the Naval Academy. He went into the Marine Corps. And um, I got a job near the Naval Academy because I graduated from college early and I wanted to be close to him. And of course, I had, you know, I had that big college degree and I could not find a job. I had graduated into a bad recession and I finally landed a position uh, at the Wildlife Preserve in Maryland, which was um, a place where you got in Jeeps and you drove around and, and looked at wild animals. Only that was not going on. The place was going out of business. So I landed a job as a secretary receptionist, of which I was overqualified, at a place going out of business. You could not define a better dead-end job than that. And uh, and so as I um, I contemplated uh, what a loser I was, my boss came up to me one day and she said, well, you know, your paycheck uh, comes from American Broadcasting Company. And I said, what? And she said, yeah, ABC pays your paycheck. And I said, why is that? And she said, because we're a subsidiary of ABC. And by the way, that phone on your desk, that red phone, has a directory and you can dial three numbers and you can be in touch with anybody who works at ABC. So I would spend time looking through this directory, looking for all the famous names at ABC News, thinking I could call Barbara Walters with these three numbers and talk with her. And of course, I, I realized as soon as I said hello, I wouldn't know what to say. So I never got the nerve to do it. But years later, I finally met Barbara Walters and I told her this story and she said, oh yeah, I remember those red phones that were on our desks. And, uh, and I said, I was so tempted to call you, but um, finally, I'm delighted to meet you after I have now had 25 years in the business. Well, uh, I went on to, uh, actually use that ABC to parlay myself into the world that I had anticipated the work I would do, which was in broadcast news. But because I was doing news, I, let me just sort of put it in the context of bad news and good news. Because so many times in life, what we look at as bad news becomes good news. So the bad news was I was in a dead end job. The good news was uh, it was owned, the company was owned by ABC. And so when Andy and I were stationed in Hawaii, I, um, I wore my little ABC pin and I went to the ABC affiliate in Honolulu and I uh, tried to get a job. And I realized I had a lot of things going against me. One was I wanted to be a news anchor and all I had ever done for experience was sports. When I was in college, I wrote a daily article for the college newspaper, and it was a sports column. And so I was quite sure that that would doom my chances. So that was the bad news. But when the news director looked at my portfolio, he said, you're interested in sports? And I said, yes, I am. And he said, well, I'd like to start you as a sportscaster, which of course was something I had never even considered in my life. And the other problem that I had, of course, was that I was a military wife, which meant I was transitory. But he said to me, how many years are you stationed here? And I said, three years. And he said, oh, that's great. And I said, why? 
I thought it was really bad news to him. And he said, no, nobody around here stays three years in TV news in Honolulu. He said, if we've got you for three years, that's great news. And so again, the bad news becomes good news and uh, in ways that you don't even realize. So um, I started as a sportscaster and eventually on the weekends and eventually moved to newscasting on the weekends. And then the main job opened up and this was where God really got hold of me. And um, the big job, the Monday through Friday prestigious job was there and I felt like I had the experience and uh, the know-how to move into that prime position at the TV station in Honolulu. However, they decided to open it up and interviewed people all from all over and every night while I was actually substituting in that role, they would bring a series of people in to, to um, try out for the position. And I, I started getting very um, discouraged and I would pray all the time, Lord, I really want that job. Will you give me that job? And finally, after about a month of this, I got on my knees and I said, Lord, what is going on here? I'm way more experienced than any of these people that are walking through the door. It is a starting market, so trust me. None of us had very much experience, but in my mind, I was more experienced than anybody. And, uh, and I heard an audible voice say to me, of course you're ready professionally to move to this next position, but I'm not going to move you there until you can be my ambassador. And I suddenly had an incredibly new vision for my life and my work, that I was actually, as a TV news anchor, an ambassador for the Lord. And so nothing gets your attention quite so fast as hearing that kind of an audible message that you believe is from God himself. And so I uh, kind of threw me into a, uh, a very active effort to know God better and uh, the importance of a daily walk with him, of reading the Bible, of praying, of studying his word. And uh, pretty soon, all of a sudden, they called me into the office and they said, uh, we'd like you to be the main Monday through Friday anchor. And I knew that if that had happened before I had thrown myself at God's mercy, I would not have believed it was of Him. But because I had experienced that, I thought, God is showing me that He really is serious about my work and my life. And so um, another bad news thing about working in Hawaii is you're out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> in the Pacific Ocean. And one of the ways you get jobs in television news is being seen around the country and some TV executive sees you and, and, uh, and you move up from market to market into the big time. Well, uh, as it turned out, executives from the TV station, the CBS affiliate in Seattle, were on vacation in Honolulu. And uh, the head of the company called me up and said, could you come meet me here at the Hilton Hawaiian Village? Those of you who've been to Honolulu know exactly where that is. And uh, we met for lunch and he offered me a job. And so uh, we came to Seattle and um, had an amazing, uh, well, we've lived here uh, multiple decades now and I had a, a really wonderful career, tough, hard, um, I often say anybody who stays in the TV news business very long is first and foremost a survivor. But uh, that was the life that I lived uh, for many, many years. Had two children and uh, they were real proud that their mom was on TV and, uh, and they adjusted to this weird schedule where I would leave for work around three and I'd come home after the first set of newscasts and uh, have dinner with them and put them to bed and then I would go to work. I thought it was actually a pretty good deal for a working mom that half of my day was spent when my kids were asleep. But um, that brings me back to this whole idea of um, bad news, good news. And uh, certainly as Katie tells her story, um, there is nothing um, about the death of Karina except tragedy and loss in a family, except that the Lord has made good news out of that story in the founding of this incredible ministry that is reaching women, not just initially in the Seattle-Tacoma area, but now, as she mentioned, uh, through these um, 
videos that we can do every month, reaching and ministering to women all over the country. Perhaps someday it will be all over the world, but the, the strength of the commitment that Katie has to um, taking the memory of her beautiful daughter and what God taught her through that storm uh, is just, to me, is good news for all of us, even in the, in the shadow of that terrible loss. Um, I will say that the situation I find myself in right now is that, for lack of a better way to describe it, is that I have chronic worry. Um, I don't mean that I'm wringing my hands all day or that even my friends or family would say, would you please stop worrying? It's a worry that is so deep that um, I think most of us are feeling it. It, it starts with the, the coronavirus, the, the COVID, and uh, what we have lost and this sense of, you know, surely we're going to come out of this day someday, but how? I worry so much chronically deep inside about our kids who are basically losing a year of school in the public schools, how it's dividing America into the haves and the have-nots. Um, there are a lot of people who are thriving. Their jobs are going great. Amazon is here in Seattle. Nobody's done better than Amazon when we've all been locked down. But there's so many others that have experienced such tremendous loss and are suffering. So I think about my 93-year-old mom. She just turned 93 the day after Christmas. And, uh, and all elderly people and the suffering that they have had being in isolation at a time in their lives when they should not be. And, uh, and then I think about the political upheaval in our country uh, that seems to have no solution. And um, even though I'm an optimistic person and the people around me are upbeat and positive, we all know that there's a real heartache deep inside. I have many friends who are experiencing uh, family strife. There's just division and, um, and even hatred inside families, and that weighs so heavily, especially those of us who are women, whose job it is in a family to make sure everybody does well and gets along. And so this chronic worry is um, a deep concern of mine that I, um, I don't quite know what to do about it. And, uh, and so I've been following the work of a, of a, a brain biochemist, and have listened to him speak several times about brain chemistry. And you all probably know that our brains are very plastic, they say. In other words, they're dynamic. They're, they're always changing. So that if you teach yourself to play the violin, a certain portion of your brain that was never activated suddenly becomes activated, particularly the hand that, that um, uh, touches the strings versus the hand that holds the bow. And so, that hand and the part of the brain that is um, activated with the touching of the strings is, is, is like it's a new thing in your head. And so um, he went on to say that because the brain is so plastic and so dynamic, we can actually affect our own brain chemistry. And he talked about the idea that being grateful, being thankful, is one of the best ways to reframe the waves inside our brain to be happy. Isn't that stunning? That being grateful actually affects the brain to produce chemicals that make us happy? And as I've thought about that in the last few weeks and uh, taken on the challenge of writing down every night in a little journal, not, very, um, not for publication, um, writing down three things I'm thankful for that day, it is beginning to transform the way I think. In other words, my brain is changing. Well, one of the exciting things that think, I think about um, science and the Bible is that so many times science confirms what the Bible has been teaching us for thousands of years. And the Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, be thankful in all things, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Another translation says, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And so here's my idea for your New Year's resolution and mine. 
If we are seeking to change our minds, change our way of, of living life as it affects us and the things we think about and the things we worry about, and they're massive, how do we do that but to be thankful in all things? So we begin, and I begin, uh, sitting down at night and I say, okay, what was I thankful about today? But as the days have gone by, what I've discovered is that I'm starting to think about being thankful early in the morning because I know I've got to write it down that night. And so the very things that are um, start to begin to annoy me, the bad news, I think of what I can be thankful for in the bad news. And I know that God transforms in big ways, much bigger than just a thought and an afternoon or an evening journal uh, statement. And God is doing that work in us as we are thankful to Him for everything that happens in our lives. So I challenge you to take that on as your New Year's resolution. Change bad news into good news in every little thing of the, our day so that we begin to change our mind and the chemicals, as the brain uh, uh, scientist says, the chemicals that make us happy. And so in that way, God transforms our thinking so that He can then move into our hearts and help us be grateful to Him for everything that He's given us in this life. So sometimes it's hard, sometimes it feels like a fool's errand to be thankful and grateful, but that is what God commands us to do. It is His will for you and for me to be thankful. And so as hard as life is, as hard as 2020 was and 2021 is probably gonna be similar, let's uh, agree together that we can do the will of our Father by being grateful to Him. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. That was incredible. Thanks so much. Well, thank you. And I forgot to mention that I, in Hawaii, a colleague carved this for me and he gave it to me and he says, do you, do you see what this is? And I said, well, it looks like an anchor. And he says, yeah, but what else? And he happened to be a medical doctor. And he said, this is the biological symbol for female. So he said, this means anchor woman. And so uh, I wanted to share this because it looks so much like the symbol for the anchor. We're anchor women. You're an anchor woman. Yes, that is so cool. Can I hold this up yeah. too? That is amazing. And I just love the one that's on your lapel here with the diamond cross. And I just think this sums up what the anchor's all about. We have this hope, Jesus, as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure from Hebrews 619. And I think, just like you said, we can all say that we're anchor women and what do anchor women do? They share the news. And we get the awesome news that Jesus is our hope and he's the real anchor. So let's all go out there and be anchor women. As we're ending this evening, a couple things. First of all, you have until nine o'clock tonight to still sign up for our raffle to win this navy blue anchor glassy baby that has the little verse in there. It's a great gift. So make sure you go to our website theanchorgathering.com and you can sign yourself up there. The winner will be announced tomorrow morning through the email. And that's another thing we want you to know is that you can go to our website, which will be on the screen, theanchorgathering.com, where you can sign up and you will receive the weekly messages and blog and things to encourage you along the way. And we also would love for your help to get the word out and to like us and share us on Instagram and Facebook. That also will be on your screen. And we also would love for you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and you will get further notices on when other uh, videos are coming out for the anchor. We'd love your help in spreading the good news, getting the word out there, the hope that we have in knowing that Jesus brings hope in this world. And so with that, we want to just say thanks again so much for joining us. Happy New Year. And we look forward to seeing you next time, February 4th. And we will see you soon.